Hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Welcome to this uh, presentation. So I am Anis Abdelawi from uh, ST Maker Linux. And uh, I'll be presenting ZigBee Pro 2023. So we will have an overview of uh, new updates uh, that are brought by this new ZigBee release and a focus on the Z security enhancements. Let's jump in. So this is a quick overview of what we'll be discussing today. So we will have a brief uh, introduction about ZigBee, what is ZigBee in general. Then we will be introducing ZigBee Pro 2023. We will have uh, a quick list of what's inside, what are the main updates, and we will then we will move forward to talk deeper about uh, the security aspects that are enhanced by this uh, new stack release. Then we will have a look at uh, ZigBee Direct. So what is ZigBee Direct? So it's a new feature also linked to R23, which aims to improve the user experience and uh, device installations as well. Then we'll see what are the updates linked to uh, ZigBee Smart Energy. And finally, we'll describe how it is easy to start your ZigBee journey with SEM32 products. OK. So what is ZigBee? So basically, ZigBee is a communication protocol based on IEEE A02.15.4 specification. It is, uh, it is a network protocol that enables devices to communicate uh, securely, reliably, and it is, uh, it's allowed them to communicate through a standardized uh, protocol as well. So basically, we can think of ZigBee as a complete stack solution. Uh, saying that, it means that uh, it defines and includes all the layers that are required to build your IoT solution from the ground up to top, from uh, Mac layer, network layer, application layer to ZCL. So, so ZigBee is a market proven solution. It is widely deployed. It's been around for two decades. There are over billions of devices that are being sold and powered by ZigBee. So uh, as it is a mature technology, it continues to evolve. Uh, this, is, this is also what can be seen with this new release. It, it is bringing new updates and enhancements to the existing ground foundation. Among the reasons that, uh, turns, that helps companies to choose ZigBee, we can, we can say that it is a de facto wireless protocol for IoT solution. It is also reliable and low power. Uh, it, it, it features a self-healing uh, self mesh network as well. It is secure by design. And on this point, we will have a, a deep, a deep insights of what's, in, what's coming in. And of course, it is optimized for low memory footprint devices, meaning that you can target uh, ZigBee solution with low cost uh, uh, chipset. And also, it operates on 2.4 gigahertz and sub gigahertz bands as well. With that, I'd like to introduce ZigBee Pro 2023. So what's inside? Uh, here with this new release, we have some major security updates. So security is a topic that is uh, continuously evolving. That's why ZigBee is also continuously providing updates to address this modern threat. We have also a new feature called Works with Al Hubs. This feature aims to uh, help and standardize, standardize the, um, the implementation of ZigBee device and the operation with hubs. So also, we have the uh, expansion of support of uh, sub gigahertz feature to North America and Europe region. There is also uh, smart energy linked updates with R23. We will see that there are some uh, updates to uh, key management. So it's security related. And finally, uh, this new feature called ZigBee Direct that combines Bluetooth low energy with ZigBee to help enhancing the user experience. So let's dive a little bit deeper inside security. What are the main updates brought by Pro 2023? first and most important one is the dynamic link key negotiation. So um, uh, previously with ZigBee network, with uh, very early versions, we've uh, seen that uh, link key was derived via uh, what we call a well-known well key. This, this was the ZigBee 09 key from Alliance. Then with the subsequent uh, updates like R22, 
we've seen the introduction of uh, what we call uh, install code. So the derived link key is obtained from a 20 byte uh, 20 byte data, and uh, this gives you a strong security. The uh, derived link key is 128 byte length, but this is a static link key. So it is strong, but uh, it, it, we can do better. With the R23, what we see is that we have uh, this, this link key becomes dynamic. It means that for each uh, new join session, each time a device is willing to join the network, it will derive and obtain a new link key. So if someone is sniffing the network or trying to figure out what is the, this link key to finally attack the network, this won't uh, be possible because this link key is, is, is changing over time. Next also, there is what we call APS frame synchronization. This feature helps to uh, prevent uh, forgery of the packet and uh, replay attacks as well. There is also a trust center swap out. So this feature initially was part of uh, the uh, ZigBee Smart Energy specification, but it was also ported to R23. With this new feature, um, yeah, there is what we call a keep alive mechanism. This mechanism helps to um, keep track of whether the trust center is still alive or not. And uh, in case it's not alive, it will uh, move the network to a new trust center to keep all devices alive and connected. There is also what we call secure channel and PAN ID updates. This, um, this helps to avoid uh, uh, I would say DDoS attack on the network. Uh, there is also a new feature called device interview. So this is, um, I would say, mainly used during uh, the joining of uh, new devices. In this stage, the coordinator or trust center will, uh, uh, will send some APS data and request to the joining device to, to try to figure out if it is allowed to join or not. This is uh, done typically through the churning stage. There is also something else what we call restricted mode or isolation. This uh, helps uh, to, to have uh, like uh, segregation inside the network where you would prevent certain devices from ac accessing certain data on other devices. So it is like a forward, firewall. Also, uh, like I said previously, smart energy key uh, updates improvements. And uh, finally, uh, there is also uh, yeah uh, this new security uh, features helps to operate on smart energy. And uh, yeah, so all of this uh, it means that uh, CSA is uh, committed to improve and enhance, and also and foremost maintain ZigBee over time for and for upcoming years as well. So let's dip deeper. Uh, also, uh, what is dynamic link key negotiation? So to s simply put, DL key is a versatile and highly secure uh, protocol that allows uh, two partners to derive a uh, final shared secret. So how it works, we can think of it uh, s uh, as a typical asymmetric encryption case where we would have uh, two partners exchanging their public data to finally derive a shared common secret that will be used to encrypt subsequent messages. It means that no sensitive key or sensitive data is being sent through the RF channel. Everything is kept inside, and we, we manage to derive the, this link key. So it basically, it is using uh, elliptic curve cryptography, the same, the same technology that is powering TLS, for uh, TLS handshakes, let's say. SSH or WireGuard as well. Um, it also uh, supports IES-MMO, so this is a hashing algorithm that has been proven in the previous generation of the ZigBee stack as well. And also, it is introducing something new called TLV that stands for Tag Length Value. So this helps to uh, maintain uh, backward compatibility with the previous uh, ZigBee stacks by introducing uh, TLV data at the end of uh, ZDU request or ZZL request. This TLV data will be ignored by uh, legacy devices, but it will be meaningful for 
R23 based device. With that, I'd like to have or present you a typical use case. So, in this uh, we have in this use case we have three devices. So, basically, we have a trust center that is R23. We have a router that is also part of the network, and we have some some other device. Let's say it's a bulb. It's willing to join the network. Let's assume that uh, the uh, joiner and the trust center has uh, have already um, established what we call a uh, passphrase. So it can be either an install code or a previously defined pre-configured pre link key. So uh, how it works is simply that uh, the joining device will start scanning. It will search for uh, available Zigbee networks in the area. This is done through. Uh, uh, simply by sending a Mac, Mac beacon request. The, uh, the available routers in the area will respond with uh, the beacon response indicating that there is, a there is a network in the area and it is uh, available to join for the devices. Therefore, the uh, joiner will issue what we call a network commissioning request. So uh, this is a new, uh, new new commissioning type, and it is the preferred way for uh, R23 based device. Previously, it was MAC association. So, uh, with this uh, network commissioning uh, request, the, the, the router will indicate that it is OK. And uh, inside this response, it will also assign what we call short ID or uh, a short address for the device. Once this is done, the router will indicate to the trust center saying, uh, hello, there is uh, someone joining the network. So once the trust center is informed, it will immediately request this uh, device to perform what we call a key update. During this stage, the uh, joiner and trust center will uh, start uh, what we call a DLK, dynamic link key negotiation. So. During this stage, uh, it, will, uh, it will start with the start key negotiation request, in which inside you will find uh, the uh, available uh, methods or uh, supported protocols for this DLK. Uh, basically, it means what kind of uh, passphrase or uh, link key or passcode you are, you are supporting, also what type of curves you are supporting. The trust center will, uh, will reply. So basically here, they are exchanging their public data point to finally derive a common shared secret. And they will verify this key here with the challenge data. So once this is done, it, it will send the key confirm message. And at this point, we can say that the joiner has, did, has uh, obtained uh, the link key. After that, what's going on? We will see that there is a new uh, device interview stage that is introduced. So during this process, APS, uh, APS data are being encrypted with the newly derived link key. During this stage, trust center and joiner will determine if uh, they meet uh, the requirements to be part of this network. So basically, they are checking what are the list of clusters, attributes, supported, etc. Once everything is OK, uh, the trust center will send the network key encrypted with the previously derived link key to the joiner. Once this is done, we can say that the joiner is fully part of the network, it is fully operational, and it will broadcast the device announcement uh, packet. So there is also another step here, which is the passphrase uh, update. So this is just um, a token that will be used later on for subsequent DLK session. OK. Uh, with that, we can move on to the next great feature introduced by R23, which is Zigbee Direct. So this is typically when uh, Zigbee meets uh, Bluetooth. And uh, what's happening here is that uh, we define two device roles. We defined what we call the ZVD, Zigbee Virtual Device, and ZDD, Zigbee Direct, Zigbee Direct Device. So this one, late one, this one is having a dual radio, meaning a Zigbee radio plus a Bluetooth radio. The other one has only a BLE radio, and it can be a, 
any, any device that we, we, we have actually. So it could be a smartphone or Bluetooth speaker, etc. So basically, the idea here is to simplify the, um, the transfer of, uh, of this install code or passphrase to the joiners. So this is typically used in the installation stage. Imagine you have uh, an installer uh, that's having uh, to install, uh, let's say, 100 or 200 uh, ZB devices. So it's much, much more easier to just scan QR code and uh, perform this uh, security mechanism through this QR code rather than having to inject the install code manually. So really, the idea behind is uh, greatly simplifying the user experience. Of course, uh, for ZigBee Direct, security is inherited from R23 core, meaning that uh, DLK mechanisms that we've seen previously are also applicable to ZigBee Direct. So let's have a deeper, uh, uh, let's say, uh, overview of uh, the stack layer involved in the ZigBee Direct. So. You can see here, either for a ZDD or a ZVD, you have the full ZigBee stack here, except the, at the Mac layer, where which, we, which we have a tunneling service that is uh, connected to the BLE driver. But we can see that uh, APS and network layers are present. It means that uh, network requests and security mechanisms are also part of ZigBee Direct. Typical use case, like, sa like said before, we, 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 try, we try to simplify uh, user experience by simplifying the installation process. And also, we can see, uh, we can have another use case where a uh, user would be able to control their ZigBee network through their smartphone without necessarily having a ZigBee Gateway or ZigBee Hub. So, it's a uh, it, it's little bit like lowering the cost, lowering the access cost for maintaining a ZigBee network. OK. With that, let's move on. Uh, smart energy. How many of you are interested in smart energy? In energy? <laughs> OK. <laughs> One. <laughs> well. Uh, smart energy is, in fact, uh, a separate specification from ZigBee. Um, Previously, it had its own uh, security requirement. And this is something that allow is, allows it to address uh, some um, market segment that ranges from, uh, I would say, industrial application to smart metering. So uh, ZigBee Smart Energy is widely deployed for uh, smart energy like in UK, Europe. And uh, basically, it aims to uh, uh, simplify uh, the way we interface and monitor and let the users have uh, an overview or uh, great information about their uh, energy consumption. But, okay? So the update related to uh, ZCE with this uh, new release is that we've seen the introduction of uh, uh, electric vehicle. So there is a new clusters that have been added that lets the user to typically implement applications where we where we would have energy transferred from vehicle to home, home to vehicle, or vehicle to grid. With that being said, let's have an overview of how you can start your ZigBee journey with us. So our ZigBee port for you is the following. So we have uh, two platforms. We have a WB which is a, a dual core platform. It has an M0 Cortex with, that is dedicated to RF operation alongside with an M4 Cortex that is dedicated to user application. So WB can support up to 1 megabyte of flash and 256 of RAM. It has uh, plenty of uh, TX power, up to 6 dBm, of course. And it is all, also optimized for ultra low power consumption, meaning that uh, for uh, Standby mode, you can go below, way below uh, one micro. And uh, it also has support for QSPI with execution in place for in, ca in case your application is really demanding in terms of uh, memory footprint. 
We also have on the right our newest wireless platform that was introduced recently. This is WBI, and this is a security-oriented uh, platform. It has uh, Trust Zone M33, M33 with Trust Zone. And uh, this lets you target typically a CZIP level 3 certification. This is the highest level of cer certification you can get. So it has also 1 megabyte up flash and 128 RAM. Output power is a little bit higher here. We have up to 10 dBm. Of course, it has enhanced security, meaning that uh, the silicon itself is uh, robust against the hardware attacks. And of course, it is optimized for ultra low power. So either you go with WB or WBA, you will always benefit from the whole STM32 ecosystem, meaning it is CubeMX, Cube Programmer, CubeID Monitor. And also, do these products are uh, multi-protocol, meaning they can do both. Uh, uh, they can do uh, Bluetooth, Red, Zigbee, and much. So how you can start developing with this? Uh, it is sim actually simple as one, two, three. So one, get resources. So visit us on st.com slash developerzone. There you find a huge list of uh, software resources, hardware resources. Let you ha uh, that helps you build your actual application. Also, you can visit our GitHub repo, stmicro.x1x, and just check out a huge list of uh, examples, demos, about ZigBee. Once you have your resources and demo, you are ready to start develop on your favorite EDE. So we support a large, <laughs> a large offering of our ecosystem. We have our ecosystem, CubeID. But of course, we support all other partners' ecosystem like ER Workbench, ARM Kyle, or VS Code Studio. And finally, you are at the debug and deploy stage. In this stage, you can benefit from a Cube Monitor um, a tool that lets you um, build a great graphical dashboard using Node-RED. So there is a huge list of plugins. It's open source. It's available. There is also. You can also debug the wire, the RF part of your part by using Wireshark to sniff network. So we provide uh, sniffers and, and uh, profile, uh, Wireshark profile to debug this. And finally, you can deploy via Cube Programmer easily. With that, we can move on to the QI session. If someone has any question for me. One question maybe I get often is that uh, how do we maintain uh, retro compatibility? I mean, uh, compatibility with legacy devices with all these new features. So this is done through a TLV uh, uh, concept that was introduced. So thanks to this uh, TLV data, uh, Legacy devices will ignore this trailing data at the end of each uh, packet payload. But uh, R23 devices, this TLV data is meaningful. So this is how it maintains retro compatibility. Okay. Okay, with that, thank you for listening and do not hesitate to visit us. Thank you.